Now we're going to talk about rabbits. And a rabbit joint, or a rabbit, is uh, used quite a bit, especially on reproduction furniture. Where you're probably most familiar with it is the back edge of case sides. You'll rabbit the sides of the case, so when you put the backboards on, you don't actually see the ends of the backboards. Very simple uh, technique to use, and it's been used for centuries. Uh, let's start by taking a look at the two rabbiting bits that I've got here. And, you know, I'm going to show you a couple different techniques, but I'm also going to add one at the end that uses a totally different router bit. And I think you'll find that interesting as well. Um, we're going to start right here looking at this rabbiting bit. This is a pretty standard rabbiting bit. It is set up with a bearing on it and is set size, so the distance that you can cut your rabbit is going to be from the edge back to the bearing, which in this case is 3 eighths of an inch. Uh, you can buy them set up for half inch, for three eighths, quarter, whatever. Or you can go and buy a rabbiting bit that comes with a whole supply of different bearings. So you can change the bearings in and out. And then that way you can set that rabbiting bit up for whatever size that you want to cut. Now you're limited from the cut in from the edge of the board to the edge of the bearing. But you're not limited on the depth. The depth of cut can be adjusted to whatever you're after. So let's, uh, let's begin just by taking a look at what we're going to do over here on this piece of wood. This is an area, as you go to talk about cutting rabbits, that you really need to pay attention to the grain. Uh, what will happen is if you work standard uh, from left to right as you normally would with a router bit, you're going to catch areas of the grain and it's going to flake out. So one thing that I do with almost all rabbiting st uh, steps that I take is I actually do a climb cut for the first cut. Now a climb cut's running against the rotation of the router bit. And what that does is I'm just going to create just a small ledge down that whole side. And that ledge then, as I turn and run in the proper direction, is going to give me the uh, opportunity to split the wood off without actually blowing out the back side. So real quick, let me run a simple climb cut. We'll take a look at it and then pick it up from there with an actual uh, rabbit cut. Now you can see just this little bit of an edge right here. That's going to keep us from flaking out or blowing out any of the rest of this material as it comes off. I didn't do it out here on the end, as I'm hoping as I do that, it'll actually flip that out and you'll be able to see the difference in the two cuts. So let me go back now, and I'm just going to run this joint the regular way and see how it comes out. So it didn't actually flip out on me. I didn't leave a lot of material there, which is actually a good thing because you don't want this to be blowing this out. Now you might look at this and think it's an awful small rabbit, and it is truthfully on what you do. But I want to show you a technique that uh, if you're into building mirrors, that has become rather uh, easy for me to set this up and work. When you're installing mirror glass into a frame, you generally have to rabbit in for the glass and for the backboard. So what I'm going to show you is a two-step rabbit that then is going to show you this area you'd be able to put the glass in and then we'll set up with another bit that's a little deeper. So we're cutting about 3 16 of a rabbit here. We'll move to a 3 8 here, run the same rabbit or same cut down the board and you'll see a two-step approach come up. The first thing you have to do is set the depth of cut. I don't want to cut them at exactly the same spot. Now you'll notice on the second cut that I didn't climb cut that area because I wasn't worried about this flaking out. It wasn't going to be something seen in the finished product. So here's a real simple two-step rabbit. 
The uh, upper area could be for your backer and the lower area for the glass. So wherever you uh, need to create rabbits, this is a great technique. And it's a very simple technique to work with. And it's one that you'll use in a lot of your reproduction furniture or in your woodworking uh, work. So I promised you earlier that I was going to show you a rabbiting technique that didn't involve a rabbiting bit. In my shop, I always have this set up in my router. This is a three-quarter inch straight bit with a bearing on it, a uh, top-mounted bearing. And it is a workhorse in my shop. I always leave it involved, or loaded up and installed in this router and only change it when I'm putting a new router bit in. And how I'm going to use this is conjunction with this fence. And the fence, you'll notice, is just a thickness of plywood with another piece on top and it has to be your thickness of your fence has to be adjusted to work with your uh, router bit but the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to lay off to create a three-quarter inch rabbit which would be standard for what you do at the back of a case I'm just going to put a couple marks in here and then position my fence right on top of it right on those marks see the neat thing about a pattern bit is wherever your pattern is is exactly where the pattern or the router bit will cut. So it's a very simple technique to line up and very easy to work. So I'm just going to clamp this in place. Not only here, you get to actually clamp behind the piece, which means that your router is going to run on this top surface with the bearing running right against this surface. Okay, so I've got both my lines just showing. And as we did before, I'm going to put this right up on top and I'm going to run down the router, or run down the board. I'm going to climb cut the very little bit and then I'm going to come back and run in the final direction. So I'm going to adjust this down so it catches the board. And then from here, we'll go ahead and make this cut. Now that technique is how 99% of the rabbit joints are cut in my uh, workshop. I very seldom have a rabbiting bit loaded already into the router, but I have this set up all the time. So that way it's always there and always something that I could work with. And you'll see it show up quite a bit more times throughout the videos. So there's a completed rabbit that is pretty much a full size rabbit, would be like on the back of a case. So you got two different techniques here, again a very simple design of simple joint to create or a simple technique to use in woodworking that you'll use on an awful lot of your projects.